yet another 392 standing here with Ryan. And uh, what year is this 392? 2022. So you've been four wheeling, going to the Rubicon, you know, off-roading for all your life. And you've had everything from full-blown rock buggies and what made you decide to go to the 392? It was just time to uh, get a rig that could do it all, drive it there, play with it, drive it home. You couldn't do it middle of the road or top of the line. You went over the top with this thing. I don't know about that. So he, bas he basically chose all of the upgrades that I would have chose, that we would have chose at the shop, and we were happy to give it to you. First off, tell us what axles you have in this thing. Uh, we did some Dynatrax. We did a 60 in the front and an 80 in the rear. So this is the XD60 front. Correct. Um, but something fairly unique, or I guess everybody's doing it now, but so these are the wider ones, right? Correct, 72 and a half wide. 40 inch nittos on the Battleborn race line? Or Battle, Battleborn beadlocks? Correct, yep. They're forged uh, whiskey wheel. Oh, I didn't know they were forged. Yeah. And of course, it's the whiskey wheel, if you know Ryan. <laughs> what backspacing is on those? Because with the 72 and a half axles, if you did like a three and a half inch backspace, this thing would be just giant right. wide. It's a four and a half. So it's a four and a half. So this has pretty wide look to it. I'm looking, there's about two thirds of the tire outside the stock fender. Gets it a good stance, allows it to turn well, clears the shocks. That brings up another point on this that we went to the highest level, in my opinion, on this. We suggested it to you and you said, let's do it. So what do we do with the shocks? Oh, uh, we just went with some uh, ADS uh, clickers. 2.5 ADS. Mm -hmm. And these are their newer, uh, they basically redesigned and built a shorter shorter body where the uh, reservoir hose comes right, like right out of the top cap that allows you uh, a shorter distance eye to eye. Mm -hmm. So you get more travel, lower to the ground, and it's got the clicker, right? Most customers that we have will sell them a two and a half inch clicker shock. We'll tell them to adjust it to their liking. Not as many people mess with it, but you are that guy that are gonna, you're gonna dial this in, right? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I think uh, when we brought it out of the shop, it was good, and I took it home and played with it a little bit, and now it feels real good. And our idea is to have a little notebook in the, uh, in the glove box, and so like on a nuisance gravel road, you're at two clicks here and five clicks there, and then with 500 pounds in the back, you click the rear to a certain spot, so you're gonna just start collecting data, right? Right. I think you told me we sent home on a low setting, like number one setting, right? Correct. And uh, and this thing doesn't have a, a factory front sway bar. It's, t it's um, the Rock Jock sway bar front and rear. Correct. So your argument, or, or your, you noticed that it was a little bit wishy-washy, right? Mm -hmm. And then what did you end up doing? Uh, we're set like about 10 on the front out of 20, and then uh, 15 on the rear. And now it just rails, right? Yeah, it feels real good. It doesn't feel like the back end wants to like walk around you uh, with the hard top on it. What bumper is this? Uh, that's the Motobuilt uh, Tomahawk so this frame is a, shop. So this is the first time we've done this bumper and it is a less is more scenario. Nothing's hanging out, nothing's in the way of the tires, winch sinks down pretty good. And when you say frame chop, cuts off the basically crash bars that are underneath there, gives you all this clearance here. And then by eliminating the electronic sway bar and putting this uh, rock jock sway bar in here, you know, we really have a lot of approach angle in the front now. As you look underneath here, PSC Hydro Assist tucked behind the Dynatrack steering and then got our WFO track bar in there with the uh, FK rod ends on both ends. Um, what gear ratio do you put in this thing? We did 538s on this. So 538s with the 40s. Um, we have done 488s in the past. He does a lot of mountain driving and you wanted this thing to be responsive, right? Yeah, I wanted it to be quick, you know, cruising around town or up in the hills. Is it still fast out of the hole? Yeah, it still feels pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. I've been talking about this and you're the perfect guy to answer the question. These are all wheel drive and we still have the all wheel drive transfer case in it and you're driving it at all wheel drive still. Correct. Hubs locked, correct? Yep. Intel engineering is if you have a U-joint in the front and you're all wheel drive, when you accelerate on sharp turns, you'll get steering wheel chop pulling in and out of parking lots and stuff. I know you've only had it a couple hundred miles, but have you felt anything enough to make you say, I need to spend $3,000 on RCVs or 2000 No, not yet, not at all. Yeah. No. So it's a 1550 joints. I feel the same way on mine. I haven't felt anything, but you know, at some point I'll probably put RCVs, but it's not a must. So under the hood, completely stock, right? Yep. This has our WFO long arm on it. We went ahead and modified the Motobuilt skid plates to work with our long arm, which 
was quite a bit of work because the moto belt skid plates are very, very extensive. They go all the way from front to back. They protect even the exhaust, which is tough. So we're notched right around here on the lower link. Um, and then up in front, we're notched right here for the front lower link. Uh, we went ahead and powder coated the motor built skid plates right here, Rockside Engineering steps. Now, coming from hardcore rock crawler to daily driving, you know, this is kind of a, uh, you know, you hate to do it, but God, it's nice to have, right? So exactly right. Climbing in and out, wife, kids, family members, um, and they do have the skids on them. Uh, so they are good to go ahead and smash rocks and you are going to go take it to the Rubicon and hit rocks on these, right? It'll happen. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. As we work our way to the back, you can see the other rock jock rear sway bar in the back. And that actually goes right through a, a slot in the frame. It gets really tight. Coming around to the back here, no big stock. 392 muffler hanging down, right, Ryan? Uh, we did a Magnaflow uh, cat back rock crawler kit they sell. And that's a, that's a true dual exhaust still, like the factory. And here's one tailpipe here and one here. So it's it's two and three quarter all the way to the back. Yes. And it relocates the muffler up underneath, basically where the factory uh, cross pipe was. Yeah, right up in that area. And then with the motor built skids, the skid plates actually protect the muffler underneath there, which is pretty cool. That's one of the reasons I went with those particular ones is I wanted to kind of protect everything that's under there. Uh, while we're here in the back, we're looking at a piece of artwork right there. That is the uh, Dynatrack Pro Rock 80. And the front and rear end both have electric lockers still, correct? Yes. We went ahead and got the Taser harnesses and wired that directly into the stock switches. So basically inside the cockpit of this thing is factory. Operates like factory, everything else, right? Just no sway bar disconnect. Correct. So back here we can see the ADS shocks and it's a piggyback. And then uh, one of the benefits of these shocks is that the adjustable knobs are very large in diameter, right on top of the shock, easy to turn. It's a piggyback in the rear with the clicker right here. And the front one is also a piggyback with the clicker, very easy uh, to, to turn and use. I mean, that's the other thing. If you have adjustable shocks, you need to be able to have ingress and egress and easily uh, adjust them. You wanted air bumps, correct? Yep. And what kind of air bumps did we order for you? They're ADS also. ADS air bumps to match the shocks, right? So uh, the air bumps are kind of a universal and we ended up sinking them straight up into the bottom of the frame, which was quite a bit of work. But what that allows is space for the rear sway bar to swing up and down, not interfere with the air bump. You have about probably two inches of travel before the bump hits and then another two in the bump which you know, combined with the ADS shock it, at about five inches of up travel really works well. As far as, uh, oh, watch yourself there. Camera guy just hit himself. What bumper is this? Uh, it's a Moto Built. I think it's their Crusher. It's the smallest one they make. And some of the attention to detail that you worked with us on is like, when we got the Jeep, it already had this stuff. Yeah. So what is this? It's just their corner guards that uh, they sell. From Motobuild. Yeah, so kind of cleans up the corner if you're gonna run a stubby bumper. Yeah, and it kind of, without this on here, it kind of looks empty, right? Correct, um, but so it's unfinished. That really just, the, the touch makes it really look nice. Factory hitch in here. Um, this has our rear ice chest rack with the factory um, Mopar heavy duty hinge, our Delrin spacer, camera relocated, no license plate hanging off. Um, and then being a 392, uh, this may look like water there, but got a couple gallons of fuel you're gonna store in that. That's right. Um, and the Yeti 65, right? And, That's right. And this is how clean you like your stuff. You even remove the Yeti sticker, right? <laughs> That's right. Make everything clean and tight. <laughs> well, talking about that, open up the back of this and show us what you got, because this is impressive. I wanted this thing to be ready to go at any moment. So I wanted to have tools and recovery I wanted to have a place to throw in some gear for the day, pack up some food, load up some coolies, have a little table to make some lunch. Uh, went with a lot of American Adventure Lab along with your guys' cargo rack. Um, I like the size and beef on your guys' rack. Powder coated it black. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, as well as the rear ice chest rack. Yeah. And then, I mean, you can see the color scheme in here. Everything just goes perfect, right? Yeah, it worked out all right. So this is, uh, this slides out, right? Correct. So how does that work? Oh yeah. All the way out. So ice chest, it's a full slide. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then 
Show us what you got going in your drawers, because I mean, this is amazing. Yeah, these are just the just some tools. Still Look kinda, at all that. Still Each kinda... one individually wrapped, labeled, so you know exactly where everything is, right? Yeah, hopefully we don't need to use them, but they're there if we do. And then what do you have on the upper drawer? And then up top is just a little bit of a recovery That's stuff. Air, air up hose. Kit, recovery. Yep, um, first aid. Tire pressure gauge. Yep. Yep. A oh, first aid, important. Yeah. And very easy to get to. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, as any uh, cargo, you know, setups that people have, sliding rack, sliding ice chest, every time you add something, you get rattles and squeaks, right? You can't get away from it. No. Um, this vehicle, when I took it on a test drive, had the smallest amount when you hit like a big speed bump. You got it back, it annoyed you, you went ahead and put more padding stuff in there, and it literally is dead quiet in here when you're driving it. And yeah. that's important when you got top doors, AC, Bluetooth, phone, all that, right? 100%. And I can tell you in 21 years of vehicles coming through the shop that have overlanding type add-on things, they are so annoying to drive, and that is not happening here. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you understand how hard it is to achieve what you've achieved, but it is quiet, tight, smooth. Even down to, you know, this doesn't even rattle. Usually right. these rattle. So that's the motor built version, right? No, this is American Adventure American Lab Adventure also. Labs, yep. uh, custom tabletop by our buddy Todd. You put this in, right? Yep. Yep. And then the light. Yep, had to wire it up so we could see it nighttime. And you think this helps it from rattling, like put, pulls it tighter in there or something? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the biggest thing with these tables, if they're rattling, is uh, just make sure you have this adjusted right. So that it pulls it up against Correct. itself. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those little details are amazing. Really like it. We ended up going with a 1410 rear CV in this. Correct. So if you got a Dana 80 in it, you got a 1410 yoke, you might as well do a 1410 CV. 1350 in the front, um, PSC hydro assist, like we said. And, you know, I've been preaching this to a lot of people that the PSC has come a long way. And so you've driven it a couple hundred miles. What are your thoughts on handling drivability? Like, does it make it loose or darty or anything like that? Yeah, I really feel like the uh, steering is, it's, it sounds weird to say, but almost too easy. Almost too easy, Almost right? too easy. It's but not it's... one finger, it's more like one finger print. Like yeah. you're barely on that wheel. Um, it drives straight as an arrow as fast as I want to drive it down the highway. And um, it felt amazing, like coming up out of the, the canyon, going to cool. Windy roads. Oh, just awesome. And especially with the ADS shocks, right? Yeah. Last few things, the uh, American Adventure Labs inner fender, and it's got the fender chop kit, so just the factory fender, paint match, and then these lights are a little bit different. We normally use Quake, right? Right. These are the American Adventure Lab, like Gen 2 lights. They're new smoke versions. Lens. Yep. Smoke lens and, you know, supposedly not going to fade or anything like that. Right. They have super high quality parts, so I'm excited to see how those, those last. I don't know anything else I would do differently. It's just the absolute perfect 392. The last one of these walk-arounds we did, I thought, it's not going to get any better. And it has, you know, um, the cargo setup. Um, I really like this front bumper. I like the 8274 on the other one, but this is just tight and classic. Goes with your theme of cleanliness on the build. Look for him on the trail. He'll be cruising in this thing. Factory half doors, top off. I mean, it does not get any better than this Jeep.